So good morning or good night, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to another interview of The Shield Doing a Couch. I'm your host, Hector. And today I'm joined by Esmar Joensen. And he's the keyboard player for the band Hamford, which is a band that plays doom, death metal from the Faroe Islands. And we're here to talk about their brand new album. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think this is your third album, right? Yeah, third full length, you can call it, yeah. Third full length. Uh, and uh, this album is coming out this Friday. And I, I'm so, I'm going to try to say the name of the album as best as I can. Men, Guos, Hunt, Er, Sterk. Uh, yeah, pre that's pretty good. Yes, I, I speak Spanish and English, but uh, <laughs> I, I know this is a... I know that the, this is a combination that's Faroese, correct? Yeah. And, yeah. and what does that title mean? Uh, it means, uh, but strong is the hand of the Lord, which is like taking uh, from a quotation from one of the survivors of this tragedy that the album is based on. So, yeah, so, yeah that's what I want to ask because obviously uh, uh, I wanted to get it right. So this is an album uh, that it's very, you know, there's a lot of doomy elements, death metal elements, but there's also a lot of beauty in it. So uh, first of all, uh, I know this is the band's follow-up to your 2018 album. So how would you say for you, Esmar, that as a band, you have grown from that last release? Uh, we've grown a lot, I think. I mean, uh, as any good band, you should evolve constantly, I think, uh, as, as you get like older and... Um, um, I mean, we've had a lot of time to sort of work on the album, you know, since the world kind of slowed down. So we had a bit more time to kind of work out more ideas. And um, um, yeah, I, I think, yeah, we've, we've it, we changed it up a bit. I think we've been like uh, putting a bit more of our sort of live efforts into the album. I think we consciously wanted to sort of not go the more clinical, if you could say that, from a mm -hmm. or version of the other album. We tried to be a bit more raw, if you can see what I mean. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we've, we've grown immensely, of course. The, the biggest change is probably we have a new guitarist as well. And that has brought some new dimensions to the, to the sound. Yeah, because now you, you have two guitars instead. That gives it more layering to the song. Yeah. Uh, so I, I remember listening to your previous albums. Uh, and I think the uh, your last album, Tamsis Likam, was a little bit, I think, darker at times. Uh, like yeah. more, Even though the subject matter for this is very tragic. So uh, actually, you are from that town where this tragedy happened in 1915. Uh, so yeah. tell us a, a little bit about the background, about this tragedy that inspired this record. Yeah, sure. Um, this is a very, very tiny place. Um, and in 1915, there um, there was like a, a some, they were spotting whales, which was like a primary source of, of food back in the day. And yeah, they gathered all the men they could from this town and the neighbor town, Falpa. And they went to try and see if they can procure food for the families. But what happened was that the weather got really, really bad. And some freak waves um, actually capsized uh, two boats where 14 men drowned. And um, while all this was happening, the entire town was like standing like at the shore, just watching everything unfold. And uh, it was huge, huge tragedy for such a small place. Like, and we're talking, I don't know, 100 people total living in the small place, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, entire households were wiped out, bloodlines were wiped out. And, uh, yeah, it had a huge impact. And still to this day, I mean, there's a huge sort of respect, I guess, or what you can reverence for what happened because children of the survivors are still alive today. So, you know, it's still very close to the people that live here. It's a huge tragedy. 
Okay, so, so when, when you were going to record the album, I know that with your previous albums, you always incorporate a lot about the place where you're from, the Faroe Islands. Uh, mm -hmm. Was it a group decision to talk about this, one of that, maybe the, the biggest tragedy that happened to your country in this album? Uh, uh, well, it's, it's kind of been in the back of our heads for many years, because I brought it up way back. And I don't know, before that, we had this sort of kind of concept album going, so it didn't really fit into that narrative. But now we kind of have sort of uh, ended that story and we tried to do something different in a way. And that the, the time was perfect for that. We thought we all thought that, yeah, that this was now is the time to do it. OK. And so the album, uh, there's parts of the album that are in the English language, but there are some others that you have Faroese uh, on the songs. Uh, and I know you've done this on previous albums before. Uh, like when, when you're writing records, like uh, how do you decide which songs you want to sing in English and which ones you want to sing in your language? Uh, well, actually, the only song we have in English was actually the very first song we made. Everything else is completely in Faroese. But... Yeah, but on this one, there's a few in English, yeah. No, no, no. There's none in English. There's there? I, I could, no. I could tell that I heard something that wasn't yeah. English. Yeah, no, no. We must have misheard. <laughs> okay, I, I I totally misheard. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but no, no, we it's a conscious decision to kind of to to really uh, to sing the songs in our language because we think that it's most easy to be poetic in your own sort of in your own mother tongue, and uh, you know, singing about these sort of concepts and about these islands or this country it feels right to to use the language as well, right? Yeah, yeah, it just fits the entire narrative. Yeah. Well, there's some songs with the clean singing that I, I, I tell you not. I thought that, yeah, I think, it, I think that's <laughs> English. Uh, but yeah, it, uh, I don't know, you know, I don't know much about the Faroese language, but the, there's other ones that I could tell, and I uh, I know the translations of them. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's important uh, to you because, uh, for example, uh, I, I want to ask about the last song, uh, yeah. the bingos uh, on the stereo because that's like a instrumental track and there's someone talking. Uh, yeah. I'm guessing they're telling the story of the tragedy. Uh, who, yeah. who's, 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 who, who do you have speaking there? Uh, that is actually a recording from uh, 1958 from the local radio. Mm -hmm. And they're speaking to uh, one of the survivors of that tragedy. It was called Nils Murk. He was 19 when when this tragedy happened. So he's a fairly old man by the time that this was recorded, right? And um, we always thought that this was, he was really, he had a really nice way with words to kind of describe describing uh, what was going on. And we thought it was really kind of paying homage to what happened to kind of use his his voice on the last track to kind of uh, for people that might not uh, understand the poetic nature of the lyrics to kind of uh, get it told in a more na straight narrative way. Uh, yeah. And his, um, his daughter is still alive. She's like 93 and she still lives in this town. So I went to, um, knocked on her door and asked if it was possible to use her father's voice for the recording. And she was thrilled that, that somebody could use his voice for something. So, uh, yeah, it was really important to us to kind of have that included somehow to yeah. tie it kind of back it's to... Kind of bookends the story. Yeah, exactly. Kind of book, And I know that the song before that, because I was uh, reading the lyrics for, in English, of, of Hop, Hobolha, uh, that's all about uh, you're you're talking about the whales uh, in the shoreline. So that's the moment. That's the song where the moment where the tragedy struck, right? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. That song is is basically uh, seen from the perspective of the people that are watching their loved ones die, and kind of their just sense of hope and comfort just shatters to pieces. And yeah. That's yeah. That's what it's about because all the songs are not directly 
like telling the story, but they're all inspired by, you know. So it doesn't follow like a pattern. It's not like a... uh, no, no, not this time. We we've usually done that on other albums, but we decided to just, uh, yeah, just let the songs kind of stand on their own, but all overall like have a theme going. Okay. Uh, the the lead singer uh, really has a great voice. <laughs> That's why I'm like sometimes in metal. I, I'm like I, I wonder what uh, what language that is. So that I was confused a little bit. But John really when he uh, he does the growls, but the cleans uh, really sound very beautiful. Uh, the the Far East language uh, is is it a combination of 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 like different languages because I I, I don't know much about that language. Uh, yeah, I mean. It is, yeah, it's Old Norse in some way or shape or form that has kind of been bastardized and transformed into its own thing. You know, it shares a common ancestry with Icelandic and probably Norwegian and other uh, few Nordic con yeah, languages. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, but it's our own language and have our own sort of, yeah. I don't know how many people speak it globally, maybe, I don't know, 200,000 total okay. and and the, uh, you have a music video for the song that starts the album uh Abba Air. and the music yeah. video uh uh well I, basically there's someone uh getting ashore and and really trying to survive I, i'm guessing is that about like someone who actually survived that uh of course it's always up for interpretation but i think mostly it's kind of uh purgatory perhaps because he, he keeps trying to get ashore when mm -hmm. he finally gets ashore this shape kind of smothers him and he's back on the sea again i think yeah because the ending of the video like he's like uh in the sea uh who yeah who's in the video who's the 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 actor uh, uh it's, it's guys, a, right no 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 we've never been in any of her videos so you, uh, did, you never wrote draw straws like who's going to get in the <laughs> ocean and get this shot <laughs> Oh, Esmer, it's your turn. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be screwed because I can't swim. Oh, <laughs> yeah. you're on an island. Come I on. know, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's uh, Faroe's uh, actor and dancer, actually, called Buadam. And uh, yeah, he he was the man right for the job. You know, he, he look, looked for some the guy who fit the job, right? And uh, he does a great, uh, impressive job of, you know, really brave of just throwing himself into the ocean like that. Yeah, I haven't been to the Faroe East Islands. I'm from the Caribbean, so I'm sure uh, the water there is really cold. Pretty cold, yeah. Probably uh, year year round. Yeah, yeah, it's never warm, no. So that's why, you, why that's why you don't swim. Like, I'm, you're not gonna get in in the ocean there <laughs> with how uh, how cold it is. No, I mean not far, anyways. There are a lot of people that have taken up this trend of like uh, winter bathing they like start the morning with like a fresh dip in the ocean and then they just take a shower yeah i guess it like really <laughs> gets so they you, haven't like, heard a... of something called coffee yeah i guess so cheaper than coffee i guess <laughs> yeah no no, no, no. I, I wouldn't do that that's too much and yeah also, something that you did on this album is you have a song finally that it's about the name of the band it's i yeah. hamford and I was reading uh, a little bit about this. There's like a story behind this, like uh, mm -hmm. like people like see like uh, and the, the word the best word to describe it is like ghosts. Uh, so tell us a little bit of what that song is about. Sure. Um, uh, yeah. Well, the the name Humphrey means basically uh, roughly translated traveling in your own skin, meaning skin as in like your likeness and because like where this these islands are really isolated it's like only like 30 years since we got globalized right so all of the people or the, all the men were all sailors and the wives were often alone at home and um, uh, legends say that sometimes they would see their husbands at the end of their bed dripping wet filled with seaweed in the middle of the night not saying anything and then just leaving the room. And when they they knew, when they had seen that, they knew that their husband had died at sea. So it kind of like is, um, is a way of seeing 
like somebody traveling in their ghost shape, saying like a last goodbye, for example. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I think every yeah. a, every place like has uh, these types of of legends. I I, yeah. I would rather not see anyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's really interesting. And uh, so when you guys were recording the album, what's the band's process uh, for recording and, and lyric wise? How, how do you guys work as a band? Uh, it usually starts with a riff. I mean, uh, Theodore, uh, the guitarist, he's often the one that comes up with some sort of idea. And the drummer lives in Denmark, so we're all, never always in the same country. So it's like we, we send back and forth links all the time. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? And whenever one kind of likes the idea, we start, of, we start working on it and um, sort of Add, adding layers and when the song kind of has a short sort of sort of nice structure we all meet up and try and work on it together and that's what we did on this album uh where we recorded like everything together like as a band in the studio like worked on all the songs together and, and, and trying to sort of yeah get every idea in there and then just see if we can work stuff out and then Yom, the singer, is like keeping an eye on the process all the time, writing lyrics and, you know, developing his ideas. And yeah, I mean, we everything sort of uh, committee based in a way where we all send stuff back and forth until we're all happy about it. OK. Yeah. So in the future, will you always uh, record in your native language or will there be some times that you will dabble? In English, or do you think um, for the type of story and folklore, it's best to use your uh, the the Far East language? Um, we're very comfortable with using our own language because I think uh, if a song is good, it transcends language. Yeah, that, that's how I am. Anyways, I'm I'm very emotionally invested in music. I don't always listen to the lyrics, but I can always feel a song, right? That's what happened to me. Like, like yeah. it sounded like from a book. I'm like, it sounds like that part is English, and the other part, I, uh, no, yeah. it, it sounds like that. So, yeah, uh, you could get. Conf that's why, yeah. But you felt the something that I could feel, even if it's not a language that I know, was the the feeling. Yeah, in, in the book of delivery. Yeah, I think that is the most important part. You know, of of a song, it has to. So the entire thing, if a song was just about the lyrics, then, you know, the instruments were secondary. And I think that's, you know, that's not what we're trying to do. Uh, but but yeah, it's it's important to us to sing in our own language, I think, because not that many uh, metal bands besides Tuir do that. And, and, and... There's Rammstein, who's always stayed almost completely in uh, in German. Oh, and oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm thinking in I'm thinking in our language. So. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah. Our, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Because I I talked to I talked to another band from the Faroe East Island recently, Tear, but they do have yeah. songs in English. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let, I, I'm learning more about the Faroe. How, how how's the Faroe East metal scene like? Because you know it's it's a place that I I'm just learning about the Faroe East mm -hmm. Islands these past weeks. Yeah. Uh, right now, the metal scene is a bit dormant, but you know it has its ups and uh, you know it it has peaks and valleys. But like for I don't know, five ten years ago, there were like 10, 10, 12 metal bands. Probably, I mean, it was it is it's really strong. We have several releases, which are a small place, right? We're only fifty thousand plus people. And um, we have almost all the genres, you know, we have black metal, we have death metal, we have, yeah, we have punk, we have melodic death, we have a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, I mean, if you look at the, the back catalog, it, I'd say it's pretty strong, actually. Not right, right now, there are not that many active bands, but that's how it goes in the small scene, comes and goes. But, but yeah, I'd say it's, it's for, for the size, it's pretty impressive, I'd say. Yeah, so I, I want to show the artwork of the album, mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty cool artwork. Here it is. 
Uh, so let, let's talk a little bit about this R word because it looks like there's uh, the blue part, I, I interpret that as that's the sea and the other part is the land, uh, but yeah. I'm not sure. Sure. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, it's absolutely like the ocean and the landscape, but we really wanted it to be a bit more sort of abstract mm -hmm. uh, because all our previous artwork has been kind of black and white, kind of dour, which also fits the themes of the album. So we really wanted to sort of, with this album, try something different. I mean, to sort of break that pattern. And uh, yeah, we, we found this uh, Norwegian guy called uh, Nick Morste that uh, did just this huge painting. So this is all hand painted. Yeah, it uh, looks paint. like uh, yeah, it looks like uh, water water. Uh, what's it called when it's like water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think it's oil based. Maybe oil -based, I'm not. Yeah, yeah I, I think so. Uh, but yeah, it it to me it depicts like a really like this rough ocean that these men were unfortunately stuck in before they drowned and 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 the mountains and. Probably the sun peeking out of it, maybe symbolizing a slight, some hope of some sort. <laughs> but yeah, we're really, really happy uh, with it. Really satisfied. So in, in your country, and you being from the town that this happened, uh, yeah. ha has anyone uh, mentioned anything about, you know, this album, about you guys uh, touching this subject? Uh, so far, not. I mean, uh, we're going to have to see uh, what people think when the album comes out. I mean, but um, so far, people have been supportive and are really happy that this sort of tale is told, I think. Of course, I, I wouldn't say that there are many people that are into this kind of music from this, my at least my tiny village. <laughs> but I think they, they all kind of respect the, the settlement, at, at least, and that, that it's in a way, put on the map that it's just not forgotten. That is, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That so, is something that happened. So yeah. I know you guys are gearing up for, I think, a massive tour soon, right? Uh, tell me a little bit about the tour that your guys are going to be embarking soon. Yeah. Uh, the big tour is going to be in November and with uh, Saustavir from Iceland and Oransi Pasuso from Finland. Yeah, I saw that the other day. Solstafer, yeah, a few bands. Yeah. So, so tell us a little bit about uh, about that. What what the fans can expect from that tour? Uh, I think they're gonna see uh, us putting on a really good show. We're gonna just finally we're we're just gonna be really happy to perform the new songs because it's completely new to us and. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're gonna do we're gonna do our best to to uh, play uh, the best songs of the album and hopefully you know just get people psyched about it. I think we just we really like uh, going on tour and just because I because I, I think that Humphrey really excels as a live band more than anything else, honestly. So that's where we're happiest on stage, I think, in a way. Yeah, and, that's good uh, to hear because uh, I. Uh, I think that's the goal for a band because if you if you can translate the songs live, uh, I think yeah. that's important. Like uh, the live experience yeah. for the for the music. So yeah, sounds like it's gonna be a a great tour. So uh, so besides that, I know that uh, that you have this album out. Uh, are there already like plans for new music at the moment, or is it too soon yet? Um. I mean, we now we're just gonna get the album out, but uh, yeah, absolutely, we're we're planning on on see if we can like write this high and and try and create more music as soon as possible, as, uh, as soon as it feels right, anyways, and not be dormant as as like for five six years, as we for some reason always end up doing. <laughs> There's always like five six years between each album. Yeah, what what do you do in the time off when you're not? Uh, Playing music. Well, uh, well, we we just have you know our lives <laughs> on the side. <laughs> yeah, other projects or whatever. But I don't know. Doom takes time, you know. <laughs> yeah, Doom is slow. <laughs> Doom, that's a good thing. Doom is slow. If not, you would play like in a punk band. 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Punk is but, like quick, doom takes time. Yeah, basically. But I think I, I think the songs uh, require the time it takes to get done, and I think it, you know, that flows kind of naturally for us. But but yeah, we're gonna absolutely try and see if we can, you know, start working on new material because we're feeling really inspired. Yeah. So when, when you were young and starting as a musician, who got you into the keyboards? Hmm. I'd say uh, Janne Wehrmann from Children of Bodom. It was a big inspiration. Even though I can never play as fast as him, but that was... <laughs> that's why you play Doom. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I can never be that fast, no. Uh, Mr. Crowley by Aussie was a big inspiration for me. Um, and like Josh from Typo Negative, huge, huge influence on me as well. Uh, yeah, there are plenty, of course, all the 70s bands are always, you know, never far from my mind. You know, uh, John Lord and, uh, and Ken Hensley are always inspirations as well. But, but yeah. Yeah, good, uh, because, you know, I, I never, I don't always talk to keyboardists. So, yeah, no, it's, it's fun to ask, like, uh, which keyboard player, like, inspired you? Yeah, that's, I couldn't tell you exactly which one, but I'm, I'm also really inspired by, like, uh, movies, like the music from movies. Like like John Carpenter and stuff like hey, that. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Big, big hero of mine. Yeah. And uh, I really like uh, the French artist Jan Tiersen. He like has made like that soundtrack for a lot of French movies. But yeah, it's all over the place, of course. That that's how it always is. But but those those uh, guys absolutely play a huge part. I think. Awesome. So uh, everyone, Hanford album. Uh... It's out this Friday. I'm not going to say the name again because it's hard no. for me to pronounce it, but it's out this Friday. Uh, out yeah. on Metal Blade Records, so you can... Yeah. Uh, you know, it's awesome to be on Metal Blade Records. That's like a like a great deal for any band. They're like, they have a great roster, and I think uh, they let the artists have like their own creative say. That's what I've been told. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's uh, That's been a huge bonus for us. I mean... They let us do whatever we wanted. Of course, they have to okay it first, but we haven't had heard any complaints. And, and I think that's so, so, so important for a band to to have get the space to be creative and, and do what they need to do. Uh, so yeah, we're really happy about it, honestly. And it's a great roster, like on and just a great label in general. Yeah. So before I let you go, uh, Esbar, you yeah. know, thank you for taking some time to chat with me about the album, music, and everything. Uh, what would you like to say to the fans before we go? Uh, finally, we're back. Uh, and I know you've been really impatient, and but thanks for for sticking by us, and hope you're, hopefully you'll like the new album and see you on the road. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. So, people... Hanford album out this Friday. Go get it where you can get it. So until next time, people, this is Hector, the shield dude on a couch, and I'll see you all right here on the couch. Thank you and goodbye.